Welcome to all of you. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about two topics. First one, modes in a planar waveguide. Second one, phase and group velocity. Let us start with the first one, modes in a planar guide. To discuss this topic, we are going to consider these two diagrams. The first diagram is going to indicate a plane wave propagating through a guide and the second one is going to indicate the interference of the plane waves. A planar waveguide is the simplest form of optical waveguide. It consists of a typical optical fiber like structure that is a dielectric medium with, re with a refractive index of EN1 sandwiched between the regions of refractive index EN2. So here, first understand this diagrammatic representation. The core region what is being represented that is with a refractive index EN1 is referred as the term guide. And the middle of this guide is known as the guide axis and sandwiched between the region of N2, this N2 stands for the cladding. Let us consider a monochromatic wave traveling in the direction of the ray path. Now, since the refractive index of this guide region is equal to N1, the wavelength of wavelength in this region is reduced by the term N1 by lambda. In case of vacuum, this value will be equal to N1 into K, where K is a constant value. Now, here in this diagram, we can observe two axes. That is, this is the Z axis and this is the X axis. We can also observe the angle theta, which has formed between the guide axis and the propagation vector. Now, the phase constant in the z direction is represented by the term beta z and this beta z will be equal to n1 k cos theta. Similarly, in the x axis, it is represented by beta x and it is given by beta x is equal to n1 k sin theta. As the light propagates at each total internal reflection, there is a phase shift. If we consider the phase shift after two successive reflection, that is total internal reflection, then that phase shift value will be equal to 2 m pi radians, where m is going to indicate a integer value. Now consider this particular diagram, which is going to show the interference of two plane waves. Now with respect to this diagram, we can observe the traveling of two waves as well as the corresponding the electric field both in z direction as well as in the x direction. Now it can be observed with respect to this electric field that the electric field is maximum at the center of the guide axis and it will diminishes towards the zero as it moves towards the cladding. We can also make one more observation that as it moves towards the cladding, it is extends to certain region in the cladding before getting equal to zero. Now, this is known as with mode zero representation. So, let us have a definition for the mode. First, over here, the stable field distribution in the x direction with only periodic z depends, dependence is known as the mode. Now, this is known as with the mode 0. Let's have more understanding about this mode realization. So, we can observe three different ray propagation over here. So, this one is with m is equal to 1, that is Te1. This is with m is equal to 2, that is Te2. And this is with m is equal to 3, that is Te3. See, two different types of modes we can represent. One is Te and one more is the Tm. So here E is going to represent the electric field and in case if we consider the magnetic field then correspondingly we call them with the Tm representation. So our realization over here is limited only to the electric field. 
So let us have an understanding of this wave representation. So this wave representation from TE1 up to TE3, we can understand that the penetration of this ray to the cladding is going to increase from TE1 up to TE3. Correspondingly, its electric field is going to change. Here we can observe this is the format of the electric field. TE1, this one means that this electric field makes this zero crossing once. So this is what the zero crossing, this is what the axis and this is what the zero crossing. So zero crossing has happened only once, therefore it is called TE1. Similarly, if there are two zero crossings that can be observed here, this is one and this is two. So two zero crossings, therefore this is TE2. Similarly, for TE3, there are three zero crossings. So that is why we are going to say this is of m is equal to 1, this is of m is equal to 2, this is of m is equal to 3. Now let us go with the phase and the group velocity. Now let us define the term wave front. So in all electromagnetic waves, there are points of constant phase and they are known as the wave front. Now as the wave propagates, these points of constant phase travels with a velocity known as the phase velocity given by the term Vp. And this Vp is defined as Vp is equal to omega divided by beta, where omega is the angular frequency of the wave. Now, in general, the light energy is composed of sum of plane wave components of different frequencies. Now, we are considering them in a group. What has been referred previously, that was a single. Now, we are referring them in a group. Now, waves in group and such groups, we know we, we call them as the wave packets. Now, defining the group velocity, the velocity with which this wave packet travels is known as the group velocity. It is defined by Vg is equal to delta omega divided by delta beta. By reducing the limit delta omega by delta beta to d omega by d, uh, d beta and simplifying further, it will reduce to Vg is equal to C divided by Ng, where the parameter Ng is known as the group index of the guide. So let us try to identify the relation between the group velocity as well as the phase velocity. That is what is given as the note over here. So first point, when the group velocity increases proportionately, phase velocity will also increase. Similarly, when phase velocity increases proportionately, group velocity will also increase. So it clearly indicates that the group velocity and phase velocity are mutually interdependent. Thanks for joining.